At least 500 civilians have been evacuated from Mariupol and the Azovstal steel plant in a UN-led rescue operation. This after the United Nations said on Thursday that a new convoy would evacuate civilians from the bleak hull, which was Azovstal, where the last pocket of Ukrainian resistance was holed up. The United Nations and the International Committee of the Red Cross have previously helped nearly 500 civilians flee the area in two operations conducted in the past week. Meanwhile, fighting continued in Azovstal on Thursday as Russian forces fought to take control of Ukraine's last stronghold in Mariupol. Aerial footage of the plant released on Thursday showed three explosions striking different parts of the vast complex, engulfing it in heavy dark smoke. Fighting continues despite Russian military promising to pause activity during the day from Thursday to Saturday in order for civilians to leave. A Ukrainian fighter who said that he was holed up in Azovstal accused Russian forces of breaching the plant's defenses for the third day, violating its own pledge. Slava Ukraine! Уже третю добу як ворог прорвався на територію заводу Азовсталь, де тривають важкі кровопролитні бої. Оборонці міста вже 71 день б'ються сам на сам з переважаючими силами противника. Та чорт забирай, проявляють таку витримку і героїзм, що Україна повинна знати, що означає бути вірним батьківщині. Moscow has denied that Russian troops had stormed the plant and said that humanitarian corridors were operating there on Thursday. President Zelensky has said that prolonged truce was needed to rescue people trapped under rubble in the plant. The Pentagon on Thursday said that while the fighting continued at the plant, the majority of Russian forces that were dedicated to Mariupol have left and moved north. I think in general we would assess that the majority of Russian forces, ground forces that were dedicated to Mariupol have left and um, have moved uh, to the north. Uh, uh, the, the north away from uh, from Mariupol, and that a small number, um, uh, uh, roughly the equivalent uh, of a couple of battalion tactical groups, uh, are still in and around uh, Mariupol at this time. Mariupol in particular is key to Moscow, since capturing it will allow Russia to cut Ukraine off from the Black Sea and link Russian-controlled territories. And for more on this, our correspondent William Denzelo is joining us live from Riga in Latvia. Thank you for being with us, William. Let's uh, start with the Russian military announcing a three-day ceasefire at the steel plant starting on Thursday, but Ukraine says that there is still heavy fighting at the complex. What are the latest details that you are hearing? That's absolutely right. Well, on Thursday evening, we had a report from the Kremlin that Vladimir Putin, Russia's president, had spoken over the phone with Niftali Bennett, the Prime Minister for Israel. According to the Kremlin, in that phone conversation, President Putin uh, said that he was ready to provide safe passage for those civilians uh, to leave the Azovstal steel plant. He did, in that phone conversation, purportedly also urge Kiev uh, to tell its soldiers, of which there are roughly uh, a few thousand, it's estimated, still in that plant, to lay down their weapons. This, of course, comes, as you rightly mentioned, that there were uh, calls or guarantees from Russia that they would agree this three-day humanitarian corridors and a cessation of its uh, hostilities from the hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. local time, uh, Moscow time. Uh, however, of course, we did hear on Thursday from Ukrainian forces on the ground that that truce had been violated. Vladimir Zelensky, addressing the nation uh, on Thursday evening, said that the shelling and assault by Russia was continuing. So the United Nations says that a convoy has um, arrived in uh, the Azovstal region on Friday and the hope there for 
uh, the United Nations and for other aid agencies is very much that this evacuation will be allowed to resume on Friday. Right, and William, there are also reports that Russia plans to capture Mariupol for the upcoming Victory Day. How credible are these reports? We have seen Russian troops preparing on the streets of Moscow ahead of the big day. That's absolutely right. That's an assessment from the British Ministry of Defence believing that um, the capture and victory over Mariupol could be seen as a potential uh, message that we'll hear out of the Kremlin on May 9th. Of course, May 9th, Victory Day, is a hugely significant date in the Russian calendar every year. It marks uh, when the Soviets declared victory over the Nazis in 1945. There's always a huge military parade uh, on the streets of Moscow to mark the occasion. But this, of course, has led to speculation uh, from a number of analysts that this year could be seen as an opportunity for Russia to even declare a wider war in Ukraine, not just uh, this special military operation, or to uh, signify it with military gains on the ground, be it in the east of the country or in somewhere like Mariupol. This has been somewhat downplayed, uh, though, by Russian officials. We've heard from Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin spokesperson, speaking this week. He said that any speculation that Russia might seek to declare a wider war on Victory Day was baseless and nonsense. And uh, reports have also said that the US have pr had provided intel that helped Ukraine to sink the Russian warship Moskva. Have you got any details for us on that? Yeah, absolutely. So more speculation when it comes to the role that US intelligence has had on the ground in the fighting. Uh, this comes just a day after the New York Times reported uh, that U.S. intelligence was uh, essentially played a significant role when it came to a uh, Ukraine targeting and killing roughly 12 Russian generals so far in this war. That was then somewhat backtracked by a National Security Council a spokesperson in the U.S. that categorically stated that U.S. intelligence is not provided to Ukraine uh, for the purpose of targeting high-ranking Russian officials or military uh, generals on the ground. This, though, of course, has evoked, as you might imagine, a strong response from the Kremlin. We've heard from Dmitry Peskov, the Kremlin spokesperson. He says that essentially it is uh, the U.S. as well as Ukraine's other allies supplying Ukraine with uh, weaponry as well as intelligence that essentially is prolonging its special military operation. Right, William, thank you very much. We'll leave it there. Thanks for bringing us all the latest details on the Ukraine war. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.